Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and we are back with another episode of Let's Build. And in today's episode, we're gonna be building the Chief Beef. This is the making of the Chief Beef Raceway. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, so today we're gonna be doing it at 20 times speed, which is a little bit crazy. I hopefully it turns out all right for you guys. I'm watching it play back in Adobe Premiere and it's a little bit choppy. Um, so I'll do <laughs> it. Hopefully it's not too fast for you guys, but I figured uh, it better be faster than it would be really long and tedious of a, a video. So at least you guys get to see the main points and all that good stuff. So here you're seeing me build the, uh, the actual circuit. And you kind of get an idea of how I went about doing it. And I did it all from the flat ground with grid snapping on to get it as close as possible. And if you guys haven't seen the tutorial I did for dual synchronized coasters, that was just before this. So go check that out. Uh, I kind of explained how the block sections work because this is going to be going so fast. So I'm not going to have time to really explain it much. And that's also why I decided to separate the two. I figured I could explain it here, but I wanted to have a separate video for that. So... Here I'm mainly just trying to figure out what I want to do for the track and I, I was coming in that way and then I decided, I, I'm pretty sure at one point I decided I would work my way backwards because I really wanted to um, have the finish line going in the other direction. So we'll see, we'll see what happens here. It's not looking quite the way I, I had it initially. Um, but yeah, the, the trick here is to really at least for this style that I was doing, is to have it all grid snapped uh, flat to the ground. Okay, so I see what I'm doing here. I'm coming back that way under the bridge. Okay, so yeah, that is the actual end design of the Chief Beef, but it's all flattened out. It's all on grid snap. There's no waviness. There's no smoothing done. It's all very uh, straightforward. Now, um, I'm just doing some testing here to make sure it's, it's a half-decent coaster and it works. So... Um, by the end result, I, I noticed some comments on the video saying that the Chief Beef needed more smoothing or wasn't quite smooth. And <laughs> I found that really surprising because I literally probably spent like four hours smoothing this coaster. I think I even did it off camera. Now, the thing is, when you're building a coaster like this, like if you smooth it, uh, depending on how much you smooth it, the guests will stop enjoying it because it's all off of one boost and it's using the momentum. So you need hills in order to create excitement. If it's flat like the way it is now, you're gonna get an excitement rating of like three. And you can see it there, I think it says four. Um, and you also gotta remember there's wait times, so that in that lowers the excitement rating because it has to load up and wait for them to finish the course. The longer the course, the longer the wait. Um, so the, I, at the end result, I ended up getting the excitement and the final result, it's a 6.4 excitement rating. And you have to put those little hills in in order to uh, get the excitement up and when you pull those hills in um, it I mean it's and then you smooth it that smooth immediately drops the dip of the hill um, so I smooth it as much as I possibly could and you can see how flat it is here and in, in the in the re end result I would say it's a very smooth coaster so I, I guess I'm being a little bit defensive here from a few comments that I saw but um, yeah, I, I challenge you to take the Chief Beef coaster and put it into your park and try and smooth it without losing the excitement rating. And the smoothing will actually not really make the ride any smoother <laughs> uh, because what ends up happening is the hills become flat. So it doesn't have that excitement factor in first person anymore. So. Uh, it's it's a tricky thing to design. It's a tricky thing to work around and I guess if you Were to make the track segments super super short You could get a little bit more smoothing in depending on how long your track pieces are uh, But you'll see me doing the smoothing here. I crank the course completely sideways and then I smooth out that and then I can continue to crank it smooth it crank it smooth it and it's quite the um, process so I also want the the walls to be banked upward and um, so the outside track goes the highest the inside track goes the lowest that way you can see the, the furthest track from the inside and uh, you get the best vision of all four co uh, track lengths 
from the bleachers. So with this this coaster here, I decided to do a double lane, uh, two two laps before it passes. Or so it, it, at the end, it does four laps total. So each coaster does uh, a lap each, and then it turns the other direction and comes back in um, for the last lap. And I felt like that gave me the, the the most bang for my buck. I could have done less and done a crazier track, but I kind of like doing it this way because it made it, each track increase like the width of the road. I just, if you put four tracks together, it kind of looks like a road, I guess, which makes it feel and look more like a circuit. So I have some interesting concepts and ideas for future circuits like this. And... Um, I can give you guys a sneak peek of what's going on in my brain while we kind of watch this being tested and, you know, see it working in the background. Um, I mean, I guess I don't know if I should. The last time I did this, somebody, uh, <laughs> I talked about Tiki Cheeky and then someone jumped in there and started making it. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. I don't mind sharing my ideas. Uh, like I, at one point I wanted to do the Cosmic Cow Raceway and Lauren jumped on it. So, um. It's all good. I like seeing multiple renditions of something and, you know, if somebody else makes a chief beef in the future, uh, you know, it's cool to see multiple renditions. And part of me still wants to even make a Foxy Raceway because something about it, like, I just want to see what kind of ideas I can come up with. Everybody has their own ideas. And Cosmic Cow, I helped Lauren with a few ideas there, but really she did, like, 95% of the work like I, I started working on a parlor for her and I gave her a few ideas and you know I sat down with her while she was building it and we we're just hanging out um, and you know I, I put my, a few ideas here and there but she she was driving the entire time I think she passed it over to me at one point and I made a few cleanup changes and tweaked a few things here and there but other than that I mean all credit goes to her on the cosmic cow it wasn't me at all I noticed a few people were kind of confused and they said in the comments like uh, this was even better than my last creation technically guys this here coaster that i'm making is my first ever coaster in theory if you want to i mean uh in terms of placeable blueprints uh yeah this is my first ever placeable blueprint coaster i built good golly miss molly and a bunch of coasters in that scenario that i have on my channel from the earlier days and then i built darla but in terms of coasters in this game i've made maybe 10 and this is the first one that's actually placeable so for me uh there, <laughs> it was a learning experience i didn't know if i was going to run out of pieces i didn't have a good understanding of how many pieces was necessary and um you know i i do have i guess experience from just like looking at people's stuff and uh playing rct3 but that doesn't give me an idea of how many blueprint pieces i, I could make and you know uh, yeah, I have I have coaster knowledge, but not knowledge in placeable coaster blueprints. So for me, there's a lot of unknowns doing this. So you can see me building the walls here, and it's going very quick at 10, 20 times speed. So hopefully the footage isn't absolutely bonkers for you guys to look at. For me, it's like watching a slideshow almost because it's uh, playing back so fast. So anyways, I was holding on to a thought, and I went on to a tangent. Um, my next project, the one I've been thinking about doing... Uh, I noticed some people saying, you know, this raceway or the raceways seem to be kind of boring in terms of track sense. Uh, but the idea with these are they're supposed to be like NASCAR tracks or Mario go-kart tracks. If they're doing inversions, twists and loops and spirals and uh, intertwining and weaving amongst each other, it's no longer like a raceway. Foxy's raceway was pretty cool in that sense but I if you go back and study it you'll realize that um, the complexity of my track and even yeah this track here is it has more track length it's um, has more hills it has uh, I think a higher excitement rating uh, there's a lot of things that make this course um, s s a little bit stronger in terms of simulation uh, Foxy's Racing did a cool thing where they're intertwining with one another and um, at the same time, I would have to argue that it didn't feel like a raceway because it was covered with trees and it was going through. So in terms of like a design looking like a course or a circuit, it was a little bit compact. But the rider experience on Foxy's Raceway 
was uh, pretty awesome. So like you're in there, you're going between the trees, there's lots of head chopping moments, you're swerving in and out of one another. Um, but it didn't, from a distance, or if you look at it from a top-down view, it actually doesn't have that traditional race style feel. So anyways, this is all going back to me saying that some people were finding that these tracks are kind of boring. Um, and I could kind of see that, like they are just like track loops, but that's the whole point. It's a theme, right? Uh, it, had I have picked a dual synchronized coaster for a wooden coaster or uh, a torque coaster or something different, I would probably theme the track towards the theme of the coaster. So a wooden coaster would be an exploration coaster that goes through terrain and around hills and does all these crazy things and they meet back up with one another and that would be its theme and they would still be synchronized the whole way through. But this is literally a Sprint 500. So you're matching the style of a raceway and I like the idea of making all these collectible raceways until we have them all. Um, I kind of want to do them all and uh or have one of the people on our team do one and so we're slowly getting through them and uh i think it's a really cool concept doing it like an actual raceway not having these crazy inversions so that's just my take i mean in the like i said this is my first placeable blueprint and i didn't want to overly complicate the twisting and the the weaving especially when I didn't even really know how the synchronizing worked. I was trying to get it right the first time. So it's best to start basic and work your way up. And considering that I, I, this is basic to me, this is a first time stab, it's still pretty complicated. So um, going back to my original point is I do plan on doing some more crazy complicated tracks, but this was like my trial and error phase. Like I didn't build Cosmic Cow, I didn't build uh, Foxy's Racing. I didn't know how to make a synchronized coaster. I had to figure all these things out and I didn't even know how to make a placeable blueprint coaster. So, um, you know, there's a lot of like, gotta play it safe. But one thing I'm good at in this game is decorating and theming. That's my, my go-to thing. So I knew I was going to be able to make this thing look cool, but I wanted to make sure that the coaster was actually, uh, felt like a raceway and looked like a raceway. So that was the goal. Anyways, I guess I'm still being defensive about <laughs> raceways and how I think they're fine not being too um, interwoven. Because uh, even on an actual raceway, you would pass people, but you wouldn't like cut them off and tw swerve around them and stuff. It would be dangerous. You, you know, you got to move in at the right time. So there's a certain way to go about doing it and simulating people passing each other. Um, but coasters is really hard to simulate that with. So anyways, all of that rant leads me up to what I was thinking about doing next, which would be taking things to the extreme. Now, <laughs> I don't really know how to make, I don't know how to do things in, in <laughs> baby steps, I should say. Once I figure something out, I kind of go the next big leap forward. So I'm not going to make any promises, but this is what's really pulling on my mind. And obviously I have to go back to Yeti land. So this idea has to sit on the back burner for a while. Um, but I, I want to do a triple synchronized raceway and make it more of a stunt raceway. So there will be loops. There will be twisting. There will be heart rolls with other coasters spiraling around the one in the middle. And they're going to be kind of, they're going to be interweaving with one another and doing some crazy stuff. And we'll have to see how it works out. I have to plan the, the course. And it's going to be more like a, a raceway stunt track. And I will be using one of the themes. Uh, I guess that part I will not give away. And um, yeah, it's, I'm going to try going up a notch. Instead of having dual synchronized coasters, it'll be triple synchronized coasters. They will be doing some sort of circuit, but they will, they'll be doing tricks along the way. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I have all these ideas running through my head. Like I could do one that does an inversion and while the others do sort of like a twist through the inversion and I can make them all kind of intertwine through each other. I can go straight up and then fall back down and kind of simulate the feeling that they're almost like trickster motorcycles or something. I don't know. And we'll do something extreme and it'll be called like the, you know, 
something extreme raceway and i think that'll be a step up and i partially want to do just another themed raceway like this because i'm just start starting to hang get the hang of it now and i feel like i could do a better circuit uh more to, like more interesting course and then you know work on the theming again and i feel like any random circuit whether it be a figure eight or a circle um you could really, as long as you get the theming right, it's still a pretty awesome coaster at the end of the day. Um, so part of me just wants to see the themes come together, and I don't really, at the end of the day, care too much about um, the circuit. However, after doing this circuit and putting all the hip dips in and getting the excitement up to 6.4 and riding it, it actually feels like a fun coaster. I really thoroughly enjoyed it, and I didn't think it was going to be that thrilling in comparison. Oh, I must have stopped to do something here. Sorry, guys. The footage is cutting out for a second. Excuse me. I didn't know if it was going to be that thrilling or not. And at the end of the day, I feel like riding it, it actually feels like a fun coaster. The, the You're going fast the entire way through. And uh, you really get some good speeds. And there's some good hills and some dips and some nice banks. So, uh, I, you know, while it would be fun to just kind of replicate that again and do it a second time with a different theme... It feels more like copy paste doing the same thing so I feel like I, I always have to challenge myself to try something new and I really like the idea of an extreme raceway so I'm gonna agree with the people in the a few comments that I read where people are saying the raceways can, can seem kind of boring because they're just like circles loops with turns and hills um, they're not I mean, coasters are meant to do inversions and barrel rolls and all sorts of crazy stuff. So I can kind of agree to that. So uh, I want to stick within the idea of their Sprint 500s, but their Sprint 500s on a, I guess, like a skateboard park. <laughs> There's, you know, they're doing flips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, I think we could get away with that and... Um, I think it'll make sense at the end of the day. So I'm really excited to hold on to this idea. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to it, but it's nagging at me. And when something's nagging at me, I have to do it. And that's why you guys are seeing this coming together right now. Um, I was working on a coaster for Yeti Land, which will probably be coming up not too long after this, probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, and I kind of hit a... I got pretty far in it and then I wasn't I just got kind of frustrated and bored and I wanted to do something new and I was so amped up from being inspired by the Cosmic Cow Raceway um, so I started thinking about the Tiki Cheeky Raceway and I just had raceways on the mind and I came into this tropical map thinking I was gonna do Tiki Cheeky and then in discord my my name or whatever is the Chief Beef and Lauren's the Cosmic Cow and we're kind of like the admins of this server and I just thought, well, she did the Cosmic Cow Raceway. I guess I should have to do, should be my obligation to do Chief Beef. She was bugging me to do it. She's saying, you got to do it. So I was like, all right, Chief Beef it is. A lot, lot of other people are saying do it too. So I gave in and uh, Tiki Cheeky still on the to-do list. Uh, Lauren actually started prototyping um, an idea for it. I don't know if she's going to stick with it or not. A lot of these things, you start them and find better ways to do them or you scrap the idea or you keep massaging them until you get it right and um, so hers is in a very early development stage and I don't know what she's doing with it um, but I like the idea of Tiki Cheeky going around a volcano and doing all these cool things where you're weaving in and out of totems and um, you know you get a lot of vibrant colors to work with with that circuit so uh, I think it's pretty cool now one thing to mention like if you guys feel like taking a stab at one of these raceways um, I'm, I'm gonna be building a raceway collection whether they built by me or other people I'm only adding them to the collection if they match so there's a few requirements that I'm doing with these like these walls they're vinyl plastic walls Lauren built, built them a certain way I basically copied the way she did it but I added length to mine as you can see I have back walls that go up much higher I have curved walls that kind of follow the flow of the track so I, I elaborated on her idea 
Um, and Jamie, he actually made the Pizza Pen Raceway, which you guys will probably see tomorrow. I still have to make a video on it. At the time of this recording, it's not... It's not ready, excuse me. And, um... He did this. He he did the same method. He used the same walls, and um, he did the launch section pretty much the exact same way as Lauren. So the stations are kind of identical, but the whole there's like kind of like a few style guides you should go with. The vinyl plastic walls that are you know they got the pillars and they're lined up tight around the track. Some sort of bleachers, and then you know your boarding station has to be kind of themed towards your product so for mine i made a retro burger diner and that's the boarding station lauren made a ice cream freezer it's like a freezer room and it's all frosty inside and they're making ice cream inside uh jamie did a pizza parlor and then you know then there's other accessories like lauren built in a ice cream milkshake parlor into her bleachers uh, just Jamie built in a pizza parlor into his bleachers. I didn't do uh, I didn't build one into my bleachers. Mine's just the boarding station, but I did something different on mine I decided to go with interactive bleachers that have shops inside of them uh, I kind of regret that I feel like I could have done a burger diner or some kind of burger factory um, Nonetheless, I'm still pretty confident with mine. I like the way it turned out <clears throat> I just feel like uh, I had a few ideas. Lauren was like laughing and saying I could make like an alien ship dropping. Uh, I made some cosmic cows and they could be dropping cosmic cows into a beef grinder. And then a conveyor belt is spitting out patties. And then those patties are going across the conveyor belt into the diner. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty morbid idea. We were just joking. I don't know if she, she, like, she was serious, but we, we, we just started talking more and more about that idea. And I was coming up with different ideas. Either way, I could have had a burger factory and a diner. The factory could have been probably better as the boarding station and the diner would have been better as the bleachers. Um, but nonetheless, I'm still really happy with my design. And then uh, another big thing is having a hero piece, which we're seeing here. I'm making a um, guard station. So that's my hero piece because it's a guard tower. It's the chief of beef's guard tower and he's watching out on his... Uh, prison yard or whatever and uh, it symbolizes that chief feeling um, and Lauren did the big alien with my little cow at the top she put that on top of it but the alien itself she she created and it turned out really well uh, Jamie created pizza boxes and the pizza bandit Riddler revenge for the foxies racing he did a Starbucks style coffee shop but he turned it into um, a foxy coffee shop instead of Starbucks but it's like very Starbucks looking building and then he also did like caffeine powered stuff so it's like they're brewing caffeine there and they're using that as fuel um, he didn't necessarily have a big hero piece that stands out it's more like the whole building and the whole thing was the hero piece this it was like a Starbucks coffee with a uh, thing built into it I think the one thing he could have used was a hero piece so a big foxy built out of basic shapes or uh, big coffee cups or big coffee um, containers or whatever or a big giant coffee pot brewing coffee uh, there's a lot of cool different ideas that you could probably come up with maybe some donuts I don't know uh, maybe that's more Missy Goods but some sort of hero piece could have been great on that so each one of us has put a hero piece in we've got a diner of some sort we've got bleachers of some sorts uh, Riddler has all those things as well and we all use these vital plastic pillar walls and in fact Riddler got his ideas off of me like the way I build my buildings I've built three different kinds of coffee shops and he studied those when he built uh, his Foxy's Raceway so he built his raceway like my buildings so it that's why it, his looks so much similar to what I built and then when I went to build my thing like this it kind of looks like what he built <laughs> because he originally got it from me so everybody's kind of copying off each other and building it's not copying but more like uh, building towards a certain style guide and everybody's got a certain reference point when doing these things so what I would say to you guys if you want to uh, build a raceway in the style and submit it to me as a coaster spotlight 
those are kind of my requirements like the vinyl plastic walls the diner some kind of cool boarding station some interactive bleachers they're not to be like mine but like maybe the bleachers are built into a diner or like there's a diner on the back side something that goes with your i guess uh theme and you know really vibrant colors that match yours so with mine i did black walls with blue pillars and a, a stripe of red to represent the red on the chief beef or like fire um i built a big oh yeah i forgot to mention i put a big grill in mine and the triggered events the grill goes out while they pass underneath it um you know it looks like they're making burgers here and everything screams chief of beef from the colors to the themes to the hero pieces and all that stuff so for you guys, those are things I would think about if you're interested in making one of these dual synchronized coasters. And obviously you got to get that synchronized feeling just right. So watch that tutorial I did and you'll figure out how I did that. It's really not that complicated once you figure it out. But I didn't have a reference point because both Riddler and Lauren kind of winged it. And they didn't actually set it up properly in the sense that... Uh, they used a lot of timing and drive wheels and changed a bunch of things to try to get them to leave at the same time. But they never actually leave at the same time. One always leaves a couple seconds faster, you know, a second faster. Um, the way I've kind of got it down is like an actual formula. It's a system. It's bulletproof. Like you'll get it to work every time and they leave exactly the same time. You can make one leave faster. So um, I kind of like, based, based on what I'm trying to say now is... I didn't have a reference point because I know they were struggling to get it right. So I was like, well, I could even look at theirs, but that doesn't help because, um, you know, they both, if you look at both the way they did it, Riddler did five blocking sections. You get a five coasters on his and his wait time to leave the station was 11 seconds. Uh, Lauren did it a completely different way. And so I knew both of those were like, there's got to be a different way of doing this. So I started from scratch after looking at what they did. And I played around with these things for about 10 hours. I made like even in that tutorial, you see like five or six different circuits I made. There was like six or seven other ones that I threw out that you guys didn't see. Um, it's It was absolutely crazy how much tinkering I did with it in, in order to figure it out. So um, definitely that's getting it synchronized and getting the, the actual system down is really important. Um, so anyways, yeah, I, I want to see more of these in the future is what I'm getting at. And if I see something that's very sim similar in theme and style and decorations and it, it matches in with the four, um, that are currently made, you'll see tomorrow when I do the pizza pen coaster spotlight, I'm talking to Jamie and I show at the end, all four of our, our raceways next to each other. And they all look identical almost like they all fit they're perfectly themed there um they all they all fit that universe that theme of raceways you could put them in a raceway park and um i, I, I want to see more of these and theme differently colored differently with different circuits and tracks and it just gets me excited and if, if we can get them like pretty much in the same realm of likability and make it look and match and feel like it should be next to one another. I'll definitely add it to my collections tab and feature it as a spotlight. However, it gets to a point where it's like, <laughs> it gets tricky because I want to do, like I want to do a different ones. I, I really want to do, um, like like I said, Street Fox Coffee, but it's already been done by Riddler. So it's like, eh, so let's go to one that hasn't been done. And then if somebody, like, maybe I want to go to Tiki Cheeky. What if someone actually does a really good job at that? It's like, uh, all right, well, let's go to one that hasn't been done. And they can all quickly be done. And I don't really have a, I mean, I, part of me just wants to see them all completed. But a part of me also wants to try taking, I want to build them all myself. <laughs> um, but they do take a while and, you know. It's nice just seeing them all completed. So I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about making these things. I think they're really cool. Seeing four of them now, I have to see the full collection. And I would even go as far to say that not just the food lines should have their own raceways, but the mascots as well. I saw that as a comment in the Chief Beef. Somebody said uh, you should do all the mascots because you could do one for Captain Lockjaw, uh, Ellie, the other pirate girl, or no, the cowboy girl cowgirl sorry and um who else is there they're not coming to mind 
uh, King Coaster. So you could have King Coaster's Raceway. I didn't even think about that until now. That would be awesome. Um, what else is there? Uh, there's that Dr. Rex guy or whatever his name is, the robot. So you could do a sci-fi one that's based off of him. The one thing that's really nice about the um, the theming of the burgers and the food shops is you can really push them a lot harder because you could have food shops, diners, and stuff like that. But I think the mascots alone, I mean, Lockjaw does a pirate theme. You know, Ali could do a Western theme. So there's a lot more you could do with it. Anyways, I'm looking at it now. The footage is pretty much done. You guys got... I didn't really explain anything I was doing along the way. I was just hanging out and talking about racing coasters with you guys. But um, you guys got to watch it. So there's that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Daily Planet Coaster videos. Um, you guys got to see it being built there. That's the whole process. I got to rant about coasters. So I think we still had fun at the end of the day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um... Anyways, that looks like it's the end of the footage, guys. So, um, yeah, if you haven't seen the raceway, go check out the presentation and the tutorials. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye now.